The practice of managed news is attributed to your administration. Mr. Salinger says he's never had it defined. Will you give us your definition and ask us why you find it necessary to practice it? That, that uh, you are charging us uh, with something, uh, Miss Gray, and then you're asking me to uh, uh, define what it is you're charging me with. I think you might. Uh, let me just say that uh, we've had very limited success in uh, managing the news, if uh, that's what we've been trying to do. And uh, the, uh, perhaps you'd tell us what uh, it is that you object to in our treatment of the news. Are you asking me, yes. sir? Well, I don't believe in managed news at all. I thought we ought to get everything we want. Well, I think you should, uh, too, Miss Gray. I'm for that. <laughs> that. That was a great moment, but, but tell us about May well, Craig. May Craig, uh, I competed with her with, in one sense. In, uh, I was sending news to the Bangor News in Maine. She was sending it to Portland. And uh, I tried to scoop her all the time. But she was, nobody ever read anything she wrote. She, she did seven columns a week and mailed them off to the paper. But she got on uh, uh, Meet the Press more than anybody else except at one point, I think David Broward finally uh, eclipsed her. But uh, May was uh, somebody that was a pioneer among women journalists, and she, she was kind of a fixture. She wanted to be at that White House press conference, as Sid indicated. She, she knew she was on television, and uh, she used to enliven Kennedy's press conference. And I, I mean, Kennedy used her. To right. enliven them, and, and she stayed up late at night. She once told me to frame every question she before the press conference. She was she worked hard at it, and uh, Kennedy always came up to a response that uh, May Craig uh, got, got some laughter, such as when she asked him what he had done for women lately, and he replied, "Obviously, not enough." <laughs> And uh, when, he, when he was at the press club and announcing his, uh, in 1960, his plans for the presidency, uh, Kennedy looked up, of course, we didn't have women members of the press club. And he looked up at the balcony, and he saw May Craig sitting up there, and uh, they were required to sit there. They couldn't even eat lunch with us or ask any questions or submit any. And uh, Kennedy said he hoped his, had hoped his mother would come from Chicago that day to, to hear him at the press club. And, and since she couldn't, he invited May Craig. She stood up and took a bow from the balcony and got huge applause. It was a very marvelous moment in, in all of that. So I, uh, I, en I enjoyed May. She, she gave him things to talk about. Does anybody else remember a good May Craig story? Well, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I think the question came up about women, how women were treated, and uh, and how people were placed in the in the house. I believe she's the one who said that women's place is in the front row, uh, and it eventually happened with Helen Thomas. Well, May was May was always. Uh, right up close, and she was recognized very quickly uh, by him any time. Well, she also was a show, what we saw there was Kennedy at his best, the teasing back and forth, the humor that he played off with her, made him very uh, appealing to the country, and she became a fixture, and it was great. Uh, but, but what you said about the women in the press club, it's hard for the audience to realize. At that time, women couldn't join the press club. They couldn't eat with the male reporters. They couldn't ask questions. They had to sit way in the balcony. Mary McGorry, my dear friend, was sitting in the balcony. Doris Friesen, great reporters, better than all of us put together, and they were relegated to the balcony. That's how much things were like then. 